From Plant Lab in Austin, Austin Texas. Texas. This is Stacker News Live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Stacker News Live. My name's Kyle. I'm with Keon. Keon, how's your week? Wow. Uh, my week was good. I uh, I I had I had a week and I feel like I stump happened. you every time with that. Like you, I never, do. Know I mean, how, I you never know how it's gonna I end. I don't really do you think about your week though, like uh, as you go the through the Stackers wanna know, man. Like, I just I, you know, I was working and then I be was working. Tell the stackers. Like I've been You got a new sign? I got a I got a LED sign for my office. You got a locker? A I got, zap locker? I, I got think? a I got a locker. It doesn't have any zaps. It's just like a <laughs> Topher called it a hipster locker. It's like an old it's like an old locker. It I is kind of like a Craigslist. hipster locker. I bought it off a of Craigslist. It has you know it has a cool like rustic it's feel, charming. which is not. I don't know if that's exclusively for hipsters, but I like it. It's a zap locker. It might be. That's about it. I mean, nothing. I'm still trying to get settled in my office. That'll be hopefully another week and I'll be good. Yeah. You've been slowly uh, building out the office. I'm, it's hard to work when you're, you know. Are we too loud out here? Are we too loud out here in the developer bullpen? I'm not or? saying it's hard to, I'm just, it's hard to do both my office and work at the same time. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. You need an assistant. Yeah. Okay. How was your week, Car? It was good. A lot of calls, a lot of people coming in from out of town. I think the blockchain summit was here in Dallas. So mm. a lot of people, you know, dropping off here first, checking out the Bitcoin community here in Austin and then hopping over to Dallas. Um, really cool. I, I really want to see any coverage that they have. Um, it's amazing to see what um, what Lee has been able to create over the past, what, three years, four years. Lee Bradford. Maybe? Yeah. The Texas Blockchain Association. So it's just phenomenal to see it. Uh, so, Yeah. Other than that, I'm I'm interested in diving in into the top five stories of the week here on Stacker News Live. If you've never seen this show before, we cover the top five stories of the week on Stacker.News, the front page of Bitcoin. And uh, turns out you can earn a lot of zaps doing it. Dude, the show is uh, getting popular. Stackers. How many stackers we got? I don't know, man. Numbers are going up every week. I, I think it has to do with the, you know, the correlation on new stackers coming in on Stacker News and then also the, you know, the price. Oh, I haven't even set up the lot, the like little banner. So I think maybe, I think maybe that's a thing. Who knows? We don't care. We're here every week. <laughs> Keon can miss a week. Car can't. Because Keon is the boss, it turns I've out. I've enslaved car. That's uh, right. I'm actually changed. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Anyways, we're going to jump into the top he five stories. He wishes he were. He's <laughs> like that, guys. Whoa. <laughs> Hang on. We're going to jump into the top five stories of the week here on Stacker News Live. Let's do it. The first top story is, now I get it. This is uh, from Sicky47, 63 comments, 7,406 cents, November 16th, Bitcoin post. Keon, what is this about? A car. This is about uh, Siggy <laughs> getting upset uh, that the bull market seems to have started and is, you know, kind of missing the good old days of the bear market where we were all talking about, I don't know, like things other than price. And uh, what does he cite here? He cites spammy bots and number go up newbies, uh, specifically on Stacker News. But he says what's really driving him nuts are friends and family who are like kind of rubbing it in when the Bitcoin's price went down, who are now suddenly you know, positive and somewhat interested in learning more about Bitcoin. Sorry, I was checking the audio. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Sounds good. I sound great. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, yeah, it. that's basically it. I, I think it's like a sentiment we all kind of, kind of have. I do miss, I'm, I'll miss the, I feel like we could yeah, have done Yeah, you got like really year. upset that week. It was like three weeks back or four weeks back. You were like, stop talking about the price. I'm going to my office like every morning. That's like, that's right. Well, I mean, roll the tape. It's because because you only wanted to talk about price. It's all you had on your mind, dude. I was expecting like what twenty more further down. Like I was expecting it to go down like even much further before the end of the year, and I was shocked. I was quite literally shocked. I couldn't believe it. I think we do for another year of a bear market. So yeah, I mean, I don't want to give out price predictions, but it it does definitely seem like um, interest is is coming in again. But it does does seem like it's gonna. I don't know. Who, yeah, knows? Just Who cares? Who cares? You sound like a uh, Kramer or something. <laughs> no, he's, he's the thing that you listen to because he's the opposite. So if he says it's a, it's, it's sell your Bitcoin, then you buy it. And if you buy it, you've not looked at this meme. 
You do the opposite. I'm aware of who Jim McCarran okay, is. Yeah. I'm aware of the memes yeah, circulating. Okay, cool. We got yeah, a top. We got a top stacker here. He said uh, Bitcoin meetups are way better in the bear seasons. The philosophers come out. This is from Gar Zero X at nine hundred seventy-three sats on that one. What does he mean by the philosophers come out? Oh, because uh, you know, like people are thinking. Mm. And, you know, they're not thinking about how rich they are and how they're going to spend the riches and what kind of car they're going to get and how they're going to earnest their Citadel. Yeah. We had some good, uh, what do you call these? Uh, I don't know when Bitcoin is a hundred thousand and everyone comes back for advice. Me, this is the price you deserve. <laughs> That's Bateman. Yeah. Some good, some good stuff here. Um, yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I agree. I kind of, I think, I think we could have, we could have done with like a little bit of a year longer to really wash people out of Bitcoin yeah. uh, before going into a bull market again, but we'll see. Yeah. Good post from Siggy. Siggy, you're on your way to earning one Bitcoin here on stacker.news. It's crazy. Every time he, uh, he just, he knows it's like he's the pulse of uh, this community. What do you think? Is that uh Crazy to say. I don't know. I mean, what that he has means. a top. He has a top story of the week, but it's like continuous, though. It's not continuous. If you if you've been here for the last couple of episodes, which you claim you're not allowed to ever miss, you would have known <laughs> that Siggy has not been in the top for at least a while. That was a that was like a couple of months ago, where Siggy was just, you know, on a on a bit of a streak. I'm just saying. Just saying. Next top story is you should have DCA in a Bitcoin. <laughs> so why did they put a red flag at the end? This is from onions, 112 comments, 7,070 cents, November 16th, Bitcoin post. Keon, what is this? Well, I think the red flag is like, they're like, uh, Hey, you, you know, DCA is a red flag. I think that's what they're saying. I don't actually know, but the post is about, uh, you know, DCA being, you know, to use, I won't use that term actually, but D you shouldn't DCA. It's like, it, that's basically what he's saying is like, if you, if you plan on investing in Bitcoin, if you have money set aside to invest in Bitcoin, just buy it is what they're saying. They have a follow-up post where they describe exactly what they mean. Cause everyone kind of assumed they meant Don't something, buy that, Bitcoin. <laughs> something that they didn't mean. Yeah. No, they, they assumed that he, that he meant um, people should, you know, be reckless with their Bitcoin buying. People uh, assumed that, you know, he meant that, uh, that if they, if they had a steady paycheck, they shouldn't be buying it regularly, like a bunch of stuff like that. And so he kind of addresses all of those in a separate post or he has a part two. And if you want to read that, you can read that, but we're not going to cover that in this guy. Yeah. I had a lot of comments here. You got the top comment from Pilar. He says, I find this article quite stupid. The imperative and paternalistic tone is childish. DCA is a way of entry in Bitcoin. Lump sum is another. Not buying Bitcoin at all is another. Going all leveraged is another. They all have advantages and disadvantages. Different people with different lives, needs, and financial plans should take different courses of action according to what suits them better. Telling the whole world do this one thing seems very much arrogant. I think you could have made a the issues of doing DCA in comparison with the lump sum strategy with 80% of the content you have here. And I would have enjoyed it a lot, but in my opinion, you ruined it with that tone. This is from Pilar. You had the top comment though. Pilar. Looks wow. like the snackers agreed though. Um, yeah. I mean, I think, it, I think this is part of some of the misunderstanding, but uh, <laughs> look at this dude. Is that <laughs> Kyle? <laughs> I feel like we're going to get uh, that. That's going to give us a strike. I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. You so, think YouTube has YouTube, something against yeah, totally. gen genders? Did, did you see the bottom portion of that? Oh, no, bad. I didn't. Was there a Let's keep it clean, Snackers. Let's keep it clean. Um, yeah. I don't really have a comment on this. I think uh, I think I agree with the Snackers, man. Everybody comes in at the price they deserve, and um, it's none of your business what people are doing with their, with their money. So. so you don't believe in DCA, or you do? I know my journey, and I can talk about that if that's what you want to know. But um, I think, you know, whatever people want. But uh, okay, so you want this? You should have DCA into Bitcoin with the red flag at the end. Definitely got him, got him to the top for sure. Though oh, that was a good title. It's oh, spicy. Yeah. yeah, you you approve of clickbaity titles? No, I don't. But if you're going to do it, do it right. And he, <laughs> or he or she did. Onions could be a girl. Could be a really smelly girl. Or AI. You never know. All right. Never know. I don't uh, think so. I'm just kidding. 
Uh, the next top story is Broken Money Book Club Part 4. This is from Elvis Mercury. 80 comments, 110,000 cents. Are you guys breaking this off for... Uh, for uh, Whose book is this again? Is this uh, Lynn, Lynn Alden? This is Lynn Alden. Yeah, are you guys breaking her off some? Well, Lynn isn't here. She's not part of the discussion. So. But she has a Stacker News account. Uh, she, she does, but you know we're all buying her book, so that's yeah. her break off. I tried, Lynn. Yeah, reach out to Carr; he'll help you out, Lynn. <laughs> no, he's reach got, out to Rook. He's got a lot, <laughs> a lot of help for you. Apparently, he's gonna break you off something. I don't know. Break don't, off. Don't break count off on it being water. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you guys have prisms on here. You could, you could forward her. Just saying. Thank saying. you for saying that. It really needed to be said. Uh, but um. This this ch- said we're on part part section like uh, Lynn's book is broken up I think into seven or eight sections. We're currently on part four. This one this section is a bit more macro. Kind of goes into I don't know like the properties of a fiat ledger and kind of how it evolves. Uh, and there are a lot of questions in this thread about that. We get into rather you know rather d- more like we get into the book kind of deeply. And we try to tie it into like past conversations we've had. And um, I highly recommend both reading the book and coming back to these discussions. If you would like to like, I don't know, it's kind of like a study guide a little bit. And uh, it's like, it's like when you had a textbook and at the end of, at the end of a chapter, there were like a bunch of questions. Uh, This is like a version of that, but for adults Uh, and yeah, I'm really enjoying them. So I, I'm in there. You can hear all of my wacky thoughts. Yeah, it looks like you and Elvis Mercury are getting into it with uh, look, Elvis Mercury had the top comment. It says, when the dollar this becomes This is part three. You're looking at part three stuff. Oh, my bad. Um, yeah, so this is part four. Elvis Mercury had the top comment. It says, in a famous paper, Hayek laid out the argument for the decentralized intelligence of the market more clearly and succinctly than anywhere I've seen. Lynn cites this paper and asks... Does a small group of centralized academic policymakers in a room located in their nation's capital, akin to a council of elders, have a better grasp on how to allocate their country's labor and capital than the millions of people do at the individual level? That's in page 228 of her new book, Broken Money. Pretty yeah. cool, man. Yeah, that was one of the study questions. Um, and it's an, it's interesting. It's like, is, is that a hard cap? Can, can, can a centralized intelligence never make like we, we're living through like an AI boom right now. Many people say, is it, is it, is there a limit to the intelligence of those AIs? Will they never be able to match the collective intelligence of say the population of the United States in terms of, uh, you know, reasoning about markets, you know, it's a kind of a, kind of an interesting question to grapple with. Yeah. Can't wait to check it out. Maybe during the holidays when it's slow. You can, um, Check it out. It's a great book to give someone you want to turn into a Bitcoiner uh, really? because Lynn is, I would say, like very intellectually honest and is not very polarizing. Just kind of, you know, lays out things as they are. Would you guys, are, would you guys be open to doing other book clubs? Like we Parker's probably are. Jimmy's? We're not sure what we're going to do next, but we might do the fourth turning. Oh, yeah. And we might do another one is resist, uh, resistance dot money is supposed to come out with a book soon. And they're like a group, they're like a bunch of, uh, professors of philosophy who have been writing mm-hmm. on Bitcoin and they might do a book and we might, uh, yeah. do a book review on a book club on that. So, yeah, I know we have like a incognito book club here in Austin that takes place at a certain area, but, uh, where, what's the passcode to the door? What do it's I say? Secret. It's a secret. Are you part of that book club car? I don't know. You, you can't, once you're can you in, let, can you get once, me once in? you're in book club, you can't talk about book club. Oh, wow. Are you like fighting VCs? <laughs> <laughs> you can't talk about book club. No, no. I'm just saying like, yeah, there's, it's really cool seeing more book clubs pop up. It's cool to see the online version. Do they have like an online portal of a sort for book, for book clubs kind of thing? I guess what's the equivalent of that in like... What's a digital book yeah, club? I don't di- know. I'm not Goodreads. I guess would probably be it. I would imagine. Mm, uh, they might. They might have some features around that. Yeah. Anyways, cool. The is this the final one? We're on the final one. I'm not sure. The next top story. 
of the week is taking a sabbatical from Bitcoin Foss. This is a meta post November 13th from the Ariad. 76 comments, 10,000, five sats. What is this? This is from Anthony. Oh, my bad. Riyadh. He is a, uh, you know, he's the guy who we've talked about the last few weeks uh, uh, oh. where he found, he, he was the one who reported the uh, fee recycling attack on lightning and, you know, got kind of embroiled in a controversy around that. And he had a few posts on, on Stacker News about it. This is like kind of a follow on where I think in the initial in the initial threads on the mailing list, he was saying that he was going to uh, bow out of lightning development and focus on uh, base layer development. And it seems like he has changed uh, his mind on that and is not going to work on either uh, anymore. He says in here, and he lists his reasons, which are, you know, someone you can go in there and read, but he says in here that he plans to become, he plans to run a hedge fund now. Oh, and wow. Which is, you know, quite a, That's quite, quite a, a pivot. Quite a, quite a pivot. And uh, his goal is to reach a hundred million or $1 billion in personal wealth so that he can, I guess, better defend himself against the likes of Craig Wright and his lawsuits. He says otherwise he'll like be around, but that's it. That's what he thinks. That's what he's saying. His focus will be. I don't know. Salant there. I need to check it out. I'll, I'll bookmark it for later. Um, look at you this. using bookmarks. Dude, I love the bookmark feature. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's one of the best features on Stacker. No one Nani's. believes you. I mean, at least I don't. But I lie to the Stackers. I don't. Honest. Um, yeah, it looks like it's Jonah Tack. He had uh, the, top, the top post here or the top comment here. He says, this is very sad. I remember when we met at the Chaincode Lab summer residency in June 2019. Bitcoin needs independent thinking developers and vulnerability researchers like you, even if and perhaps particularly if they are from different cultures and languages. Uh, then we had the OP comment. Thanks, John, for your work on Bitcoin since all those years. And I share the same kindness about that. the said memories. Looking forward to keep contributing on ensuring we have a Bitcoin development space for everyone especially people from different cultures and languages, building bridges across cultures takes time and patience. That's, that's a lovely response. I, I believe in that personally, Keon. I, I, I do think uh, there's something to be said about different cultures and backgrounds in a room trying to change the world for the better. I think, yeah. I think, I think different cultures and backgrounds do bring a sense of, um, you know, I don't know what you would call it perceptiveness from different sort. I, I don't, I don't know. I just feel like it's uh, Bitcoins for everyone. And it, it um, definitely makes, definitely makes things a little bit easier if everyone is working on it. Well, we certainly got uh, Central America and North America represented in the lab. Uh, we just got to work on the other, con the other places in the world. Oh, you mean here? Like in Pueblo? Yeah, we have a we have quite a lot of people with different cultures and backgrounds and stuff. It's um basically an Olympic team. Yeah. What? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like up like a, I remember, did you ever see it? Never mind. It's I've seen are you you're talking about the bobsled? <laughs> it, bob it, it was a bad it was a bad No, no, it no. was a bad bad analogy. I'm two beers in stackers, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, please. It's already using the beers as a crutch. <laughs> He's going to tell you exactly what he thinks of you. It's the beers. No. Um, no, I, th I think, I think there, I think there's something to be said about that. Right. Come on. Different cultures, different backgrounds working on Bitcoin. No one, no one disagrees with that. Okay, I cool. don't think no one, no sane person disagrees with that. So you don't have to justify that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Next top story, <laughs> the final top story. It's deflation, not inflation via the sovereign individual. Uh, block talk, November 11th, meta post, 13 comments, 10,900 cents. What is this? Is this the, are we at the end game? Uh, this is, well, the, um, if you read uh, The Sovereign Individual, it kind of break, it, it's like incredibly prescient. It like, it, uh, assuming I'm wow, using that word correctly, this is cool. it like predicts a lot of these things are going to happen in the future. And this book was written, I believe in the early nineties. And uh, the block talk 
lists out here, you know, uh, the stages and kind of like says, and you can see in the little uh, the pink text, like what where we're at as far as that stage. And yeah, and it's crazy. So so step 11, I'm sorry, it's just getting really interesting. The deflationary environment may drag on for some time with more adverse consequences in the high cost industrial economies of North America, Western Europe, than in the low cost economies in Asia and Latin America. TBC, what does he mean by that? To be the to, to be continued. To be continued. And then step 12, it will be easier for persons living in traditionally poor countries to surmount the hurdles that their governments have there to place have placed in the path of economic growth. Yeah, dude. We're literally seeing that. Yeah. That's well, fascinating. Well, the deflationary stuff is 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 kind of the the main point they end with because most of us are th- here, here oh, thinking wow. and most of the, most of the people on podcasts are talking about inflation and uh, they're arguing that, or they're, they're kind of saying, they're kind of reminding us that the sovereign individual um, predicts deflation actually, which, you know, is an interesting perspective given that most of us think that, that there'll likely be inflation. Um, look but it's hard to tell. It's too early to look tell. Look at step 13, the losers and, and the left behinds in the information society will envy and resent the success of the winners or of winners. I could totally see that. That's kind of how it always, I mean, that's the dynamic. Military authorities in the United States and other leading nation states are both planning for inferior acts of information sabotage that could have severe consequences for disabling large systems and active cyber warfare could close down telephone switching station disrupt air traffic control or sabotage a pumping system that regulates the flow of water to a city. God. Step 15, the effectiveness of efforts to bar illegal immigrants convincingly shows that the nation states will be unable to seal their borders. Dude, children of men. He's literally describing children of men. How many times have you watched that movie, Carl? Two million times. Like a real, can you give me like a real number? How many times? No, it? at least like 30 times, 25 times. Oh my times. gosh. Yeah, it's such so a great, dude, times. it's, dude, it's like, it's, it's, it's near perfect of a film, like from like the plot to the story, to the acting, to just the cinematography. Um, I mean, you're talking about uh, the characters, the, the arc with Logan and Grease. See? I mean, it's a good, I remember, I recall it, but I don't recall being moved to the point of. Watch 30, it again. It's, it's near perfect. Watching it 30 Church times. Of, and then on top of that, just how forward, kind of like the sovereign individual, just how forward. Uh, Thinking it is. Yeah. Do you think, uh, very, very, do you very, think there might be something more personal that you find uh, hmm, interesting about the movie? Yeah. Cause you're, cause there are lots of great movies that are perfect, arguably like. And so why this one in particular? I think it gets so many things right for the day and age that we're in. And I I think that plays a big, big part of it. Like stackers this weekend, watch children of men. Let me know in the comments telling you it's, 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 it, it, it falls right in line with this stuff. I mean, good art, good, good art, you know, causes emotion and and, and reaction. Uh, But great art um, inspires and prevents inspires and prevents or I just came up on the fly. <laughs> yeah, I was saying, you weren't, you weren't even, you weren't, you didn't even care that it made sense. You're it like, does whatever, make sense though. You're like whatever comes to my it mind. Just, it kind of does. I'm, I'm two, three beers in. He's on, he's one and a half beers in. This is, I'm doing it for Darth. He wants, he wants us to drink. Man. And like we still really, haven't paid him back. These things are, are you, 4% ABV on them. So I'm a lightweight. Uh, we got Antec with the top comment. He said, inflation, deflation will depend on the asset. Everything moves at different rates, despite the simplistic attempt of CPI to make a single metric of all things. It's hard to generalize this into a blanket statement. Housing is currently undergoing a deflation, Bitcoin inflation. Some food is inflating with, while wow, some is deflating. Local organic eggs are cheaper than they were last year, but more than they were five years ago. It's a highly nuanced set of multi- Variate threads. I think the development of fusion power stations is going to massively affect this over the next five to ten years. We have function, function, functionally free residential energy in some places in the near future. Gosh, I need to dive into this post. This is good stuff. This is what I come to Sacrenews for, Keon. This is this type of stuff. Good. Well, this is a good book. I recommend the uh, reading the book. And yeah, this thread is a good, really good, good 
a good summary of kind of the concepts in the book. I don't know if I agree with fusion power coming online in five to 10 years, but out of necessity though, uh, it doesn't matter if it's necessity. We have, we have like, there are real bottlenecks on the, on the science and deployment of fusion energy, unless you have some kind of conspiracy that we're being held back. But we're, I don't think that's true. I know someone who's working on okay. like the premier fusion project and uh, it is, it is where it is. It's yeah. not farther ahead. It's like battery tech, I guess. Uh, There's no way around it. As far battery as like, tech is way farther along, but yeah, it, it, there are like kind of how it used to be. I guess I remember it. People saying like, "Oh, you can't go, you can't go any more than we currently are." As far as like these lithium iron bi- batteries and stuff. I don't. I don't know exactly mm. what. Cool. You're referring to great post block talk. Keep it up. More of this stuff. I think this is this is like the the good stuff that that uh, that needs to be shared out there. This is like there's gold on Stacker News. Well, that's a bad analogy. If there's alpha on Stacker News, this is the type of alpha I want. And that's our top five stories of the week. I'm going to jump into my top stories. Keon, did you see what I posted yesterday evening? Uh, nope. So okay, you probably have heard there's the this, Beatles have a- there's this new Beatles song um, that came out and it utilizes uh, AI. And I was wondering, I was like, how do they do this? Right. Cause you know, I love music. I listen to it all the time. This is actually a really good song by the way, but he, he, this guy, he, he does, uh, um, great interviews and stuff, but he goes into how they did the AI thing. So check this out. It's kind of cool. He plays it out and kind of breaks it down, but this is kind of what they did. They, uh, threw the demo tape that Yoko Ono gave him. And then they were able to separate the two, uh, the two, uh, the, the one tape track into two separate vocal lines right there. And then the instrumental line, which is just John Lennon on a piano playing, but he was playing the piano while also singing in the same room on a cassette recorder. So it's, uh, it's interesting that they were able to separate cause it, 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 dude, that's really hard to do just like from like a producer standpoint, like it's really hard to do this. Um, the fact that you're just able to upload it and, um, and get the quality that he has there. It's pretty phenomenal. Anyway, I just thought the snackers would love it. Cause I I've been wondering like how all this stuff is working. Um, anyways, no one commented on it. So <laughs> yeah, I don't, th- I don't know. I, I mean, I didn't want, I didn't see it. Uh, uh, anyways, snackers, check it out. I know we have a couple of music fans. Anyway, I want to share that. The other thing I wanted to share was cascader. Bold off one is going on 2 million, wait, two Bitcoin for grabs. Dude, this is, this is an amazing project that took off here at TabConf. I think they placed, um, was it, was it the lightning category? I think it was the lightning category. They won one of the categories. Yeah. And, uh, L-N-U-R-L what category. was it? LNURL category. And so he's, he's been continuing Uncle Jim 21. He's been working really hard on it. It's like. Is the he old- Young Wolf? Is that him? Doxed. Okay. Doxed. Uh, um, that's my fault. Uh, anyways, been killing it check it out. It's an amazing demo. Uh, I want to write about it next week on Thriller at some point, but just the, the, the work ethic that he's put behind it. And this guy's coming in at eight, you know, staying till like eight, doing his regular job and then grinding afterwards. It's just, uh, it's very inspiring to see, but yeah, snackers, check it out. I think you'll love it. Yeah. Uh, I've been checking, I've been using it or I've used a dem- I've, I've messed around with it. Uh, it's very cool. I didn't realize it was like uh, ready to be shared. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really cool. Well, you get, you can uh, chain workflows t- together, like, uh, and, and in a decentralized way it's using no stir. And then uh, it's using the, yeah, it sounds like it's using the different um, technologies in the, uh, in the right way or no? What do you it's think? It's using technologies. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you interrupted I'm, me to say it's, I'm using sorry. Te- <laughs> it's using technology. I'm three beers. <laughs> that's, that's a full beer. He's only this, this is one here. How do you empty. know I wasn't drinking before? Uh, uh, anyway, uh, it's using no stir, uh, to communicate with people who run these services for Cascader and you can chain them together and you pay with, uh, lightning. And so uh, they have two demos right now on the site where you can get ChatGPT to write you a prompt that it will then feed into 
I believe, uh, stable diffusion. Uh, or, and then uh, in this case, this is a YouTube, you can feed it a YouTube URL and it'll give you a transcript of it. But the idea is like you can develop a really complex workflow, pay, you know, I don't know, you know, pennies most likely and uh, get a get a result that might be very expensive uh, under normal circumstances. And so it's cool and it's all, you know, decentralized, KYC free and, you know, all the yeah, all the just, good stuff we like. Yeah, it's just the right way doing it, I think. But yeah, great project. Check it out, Stackers. Um, the other thing I wanted to share was Bitcoin Plus Plus in Austin, baby. Look at this. It's out, Keon. You can buy tickets. Can you I bought a ticket. It? Did you buy a ticket? I'm planning on. I think they go up in two days, I think. Yeah, two days. But this is going to be a really big conference. Looks like it's happening again at the Palmer Event Center. Um, yeah, last, last year was phenomenal. You got the moon. Testnet's going to be there. Gosh, dude. It's going to be good, dude. Oh, Robin Linus is coming. Look at that. Look at it. Yeah, I think it's, where is it at right here? Get your conference pass. Next hike is November 18th. So tomorrow, 14 left at this price. Right there. It's pretty good. Wanted to share that. And uh, yeah, that's all my top stories of the week. Keon, we got a couple AMAs. We did. We had, we don't need to go too deep into them. We had Robert Linus on who's been, I don't I don't know. He like, he, he woke up uh, from a nap or something and <laughs> really started releasing a bunch of stuff. He released BitVM. He released his website, RobinLinus.com. I think he's had that for a while. <laughs> he released, I mean, he had released stake chains, I think earlier this year, but I don't think he got nearly as much attention as either BitVM. Also, also zero sync is another thing that um, he had, He'd recently released, I think he had been working on it for a while though. Uh, and then I think the other thing is Bitstream. Um, and we had him on for AMA. People ask him a lot of questions. You can kind of, uh, you don't, if you it. don't, if you didn't ask him a question, you could, maybe someone asked him a question that you would have wanted to ask and you can read them. Yeah. Check it out. You can check out his website at robinlinus.com. Uh, the next AMA that we had was with Svetsky, right? Yep. We had Svetsky on. So Svetsky, most people know Svetsky is kind of a Bitcoin philosopher, trad dude. Um, and he was, I think he was like uh, a co-founder of Am the Amber app, which was an exchange. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's gone on to create uh, spirit of Satoshi now. And uh yeah. And it's a, it's like, he's trained his own LLM, uh, to on like Austrian economic like stuff. And then also Bitcoin stuff, I think probably the mailing lists and maybe the Bitcoin talk forums. And so he's trying to build a based AI basically, uh, and specifically Bitcoin based AI. And, and it's kind of interesting because you know, most of us have probably used chat GBT by now. And, you know, uh, there's people tend to have like two visions for the future of AI. And one of them is it'll, there'll be like one very great general intelligence and it'll maybe satisfy most people's needs. And it's kind of like a monopoly, kind of like Google is, but, uh, uh, spirit of Satoshi, in a way and projects like it, I think uh, are asserting that, no, that's not the future of AI. The future of AI is instead um, more uh, narrow in terms of uh, focus. And when you want Bitcoin stuff, you'll go to a Bitcoin AI. And when you want, maybe, maybe when you don't know what you want, you'll go to a general intelligence. And so we're kind of seeing this happen in real time and it's nice to see it happening in Bitcoin specifically. Um, and yeah, a lot of yeah, questions. Really get cool asked. stuff, man. I can't wait to check this out over the weekend too, as well. Um, yeah. And the last thing we have is Reddit is dead. Long live stacker news. This is from Ben War, War, Warman, Warman, another Ben, November 12th, Bitcoin post freebie, 68 comments, 7,844 cents. What is this, Keon? I don't I we need to get I think we need to get rid of a couple bends in Bitcoin or can we kick Whoa. them out? Can they start shit coining or something so we Why? can make some room no, for new bends? The bends are strong right now. The bends have never been stronger. 
We uh, uh, not the good bends. The I'm just talking about the we rank order the bends. No, and we take there's the, a, this like the Coobs. There's only one of you. Uh, you can't go up against the bends. Uh, you can submit. I know a which bends I'd keep and which bends <laughs> I would. I don't, actually don't know. I don't know of any bend that I don't like. So maybe that would be all the bends are really cool. I know. That's what's sad. Maybe I should so, just change my name to Ben. Is this what it's about? It's a Ben post? No, it is not. Uh, I just <laughs> wanted to talk about Ben's. But uh, this, is a po- this is a post uh, about I get this Ben, this, this Bitcoin Ben was, is a huge Redditor. Mm. And they are, I guess, ready to leave Reddit. Um, and they've come to Stacker News. Wow. And so we're, they posted about it. And, you know, they describe a little bit of what's going on at Reddit and, you know, cause as most people know, Reddit <laughs> is looking to, uh, oh, this is great. Reddit is looking to IPO. So they're, oh, they're are like, they really, they're making a lot of decisions that are based Tony on that, Nass which are, is ready to do it. You know, usually not great ones. Um, when a company has kind of stagnant growth, they begin trying to you know, do like ESG one. optimizations to their company to appear more attractive. And then uh, additionally, Reddit uh, kind of put the kibosh on their uh, their cryptocurrency. I think it was like Moon Token or something and uh, sent, you know, basically, you know, to some extent <laughs> bankrupted a bunch of people who I were, love this. This is like one of my favorite stack of news memes who were invested on in it. Anyway, Keep talking, Cam, this is great. I see you're, you're going through. Wow. Your memes. Look at this. This match is perfect. Um, yeah. Cool, man. Welcome to the party. Welcome to the party. Yeah, man. There you go. I'm going to zap you. 21. There you go. Uh, the next post we got is meta. This is some meta. Keon, what is, uh, what's going on here? Oh, yeah. Over the weekend, I think this is Sunday, I released this. This was, um, we increased the base posting costs to 10 cents. <gasps> How dare you? And uh, recent had been pretty noisy. I mean, that earlier post, the post what earlier. What was it before? That, just one set? It was one set. Oh, yeah. So Why didn't you go halfway? Go down to five? Uh, I don't know. Why don't you go halfway in Pleb Labs? Calm down. What, I don't like it. <laughs> why, don't, why not? I don't know, car. <laughs> Come on. Let's just, we're just I love how a, you're turning the table. No one's listening. <laughs> no one's listening. Well, you only like the table one way, so that's why I like to turn it. I'm chained <laughs> to this desk, Keon. I'm chained to this desk. Uh, no, keep that's going. how keep I know going. you've o- you've only had one and a half beers, and you're pretending to have more. <laughs> no, keep uh, going. Uh, you can scan QR codes when you withdraw oh, now. Cool. Great. Search search should be much better. I feel like search was never a problem. You've complained about search several times on this podcast. No. Find those episodes, stackers. Nah, never. Uh, uh, search has gotten, search has gotten much, much better. Uh, but, uh, we now made it so the OPs can self reply to their own posts, um, oh. without an escalating cost. Wait, how much does that cost then? It costs one sat now, as opposed to like 50 or 20 or whatever. It would escalate before exponentially. Yeah. I always thought that was kind of weird. Yeah. I think, I don't think people liked it. Uh, anyway, there were a number of other things that we did. You can like search by date. Is Is it here at the bottom? We still have the change log still changes. Yeah. I don't know if it's been updated with this stuff. Get on it. It is. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. Oh, you can also delete your withdrawal notification, your withdrawal invoices, which we don't yet delete from our nodes. Yeah. If you're curious on uh, any of the changes here, just do this. You can be like sat. You see all the sat changes that he's done. Keon's transparent. Love to see it, Keon. Love to see it. Um, cool. That's all the top stories of the week, Stackers. And that's all our stories and the meta stories. Let's jump into the uh, top. What is it? The top Zappers? Top Stackers. It's top Stackers. Ooh, Elvis Mercury. Elvis Mercury with their book club post. So they're what also want to look at how many comments <laughs> they left. That's funny. They've only been on the site maybe two months and they're already a thousand plus to a million a thousand items and comments deep. Zap them. Zap. Oh, uh, you can't zap them because the thing. Well, you know where to go. Um, Siggy, Darth Coy. Look at this guy. Darth Coy. Do people are, people are, uh, are uh, responding to Darth? Onions. Look at onions up there. Look at you. You're still up there. Undisciplined. Gray Ruby. Ben Worman. 
Oh, he, Ben Warman. He got, oh, he got a right. little stipend for leaving Reddit. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look, he has a blog. Let's see what this. Oh, it's a travel blog. Oh, I love this stuff. Nice. Yeah. 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 Check it out. BenWarman.com. Dude, everybody's going to Coob.com coming. Uh, I have a blog somewhere, but I don't, I don't post to it. So, all right, it's time to get into the most boring. It's the most boring, absolute boring segment in Bitcoin. Top Cowboys. Top Cowboys. Here we go. Looks like KR is still at the top of the list. I don't know if anyone's ever going to unseat him. At this point, KR is just flexing. Look at him. Yeah. He, Stoic. He kept it off for a while, but it looks like he's flexing now. It's just like. Try to unseat. That's right, guys. Cut. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think you want to stand off with Kr. Definitely the, don't. Not in cowboy because he might draw faster. Probably doesn't have a fast draw. Well, that's a fast draw. Siggy, Siggy, forty-seven, right behind him. Orthworm. Wait. Iver's so what not. is what is Siggy's? Uh, does it have? Oh, two thirty, and then what you is hover Rooks? over the hat here in this view. Two ninety. So he's sixty days away. You hover over the hat in this view. You can see the just over the thing. Yeah. There you go. Oh wow! So Siggy could catch up to him. Well, if KR, KR has to stop, there's no way for Siggy to leapfrog. Could he stop, though? Could he? That's the question. That's what we're Does all, he want to, though? That's what we're all waiting for. That's so what all this, the lovers we'll see, of this. We'll see how this plays out over the course of the next couple of years. It would be cool to, like, maybe once you get a record key on, maybe you can just put, like, I don't know, keep track of the Go top to the record. profile. Oh, he would just always have their top. Go to the profile. So if I go to him, will he have his... <gasps> Oh, you do have Everyone their, has their longest. Maybe there should just be a, a trophy suit. there for the so top. So, for instance, if you go to your profile, it's probably like two. <laughs> <laughs> is it? That's probably yes. I have two profiles now. Oh, you had nine days. Look at you. At one point. Get out of here. At one point, you were protected from the sun. I'm cowboyed up. Hey, man. You either, uh, you either adapt with the Wild West or you get, you get a That's shot. Right. You get a snake bite and you lose your leg. <laughs> And yeah, now Carver, you're look that, at Carvin. You're that Boom, guy. Boom, 84 days. This is my, this is my dark horse. He's pick. coming up. Where, I, what look at this. I've look, been looking for close. Tony in these rankings. I don't know where he is. Now he uh, gave up. He's like me. He's like, screw this. I Cowboy know. Stuff. He does, he's really. Anyways. My favorite thing is like when uh, someone I know kind of well joins the site and they begin asking me about the cowboy hat. And, you and I'm like, them. good luck. That's what I say to them. I say, good luck. Yeah, it took me like 17 episodes to figure out what the cowboy hat did. And Super told me. Anyways, that's cool. Uh, Keon, we got a uh, we got some zaps on Fountain, dude. We got some we got zaps. a lot. I, I forgot to cover the ones last week, so let me start with the ones from two weeks ago. This is from uh, Stacker News. My entire life with Topher Scott. The the escrow discussion is fire. Pay attention. People love the the escrow segment. The, the other one was damn it. I wanted to hear about the meteorite at Mecca. This is from Ungovernable. What was that again? I know you told me before the show, but what was that again? Well, it's like, it's a meteor. Uh, well, it's believed. Like Mecca, Mecca, is, Mecca is built around a rock that sits on the corner of a building in the middle of Mecca. And uh, when people visit Mecca, they pray there. But then I think during other periods, they will circle this building in the middle of Mecca, which has this rock in the corner that's believed to be a meteor that, is, that has fallen to earth. And I don't, uh, no one's allowed to test it. So no one really knows. Cause it's been, it's been like a holy object for, you know, thousands of years. Um, but it's, but you know, it's based on the look of it. Most people, and like, I think some of the folklore around it, some people believe that it is a, it is a meteor, um, or it actually is, you know, a, a whole, like a, 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 some other type of object that isn't, uh, that is, that has more immaterial origin, but that's the, I didn't know that until very recently. That's why I was excited to say it until I was shut down by car <laughs> in that episode. <laughs> well, you're, I'm giving you the floor now to explain. Oh, okay. I have permission now I from mean, the guy who ahead. claims to be changed. We had a desk show to do, and, man. And drunk. There's a, the stackers don't want to hear about this stuff. Only one Clearly stacker. Clearly they do. One stacker. They put up stacks. There's two people it, that listen. Katie and this guy. <laughs> Katie didn't want to hear this stuff. Anyways. Katie. You know how to reach me. Tell me. Wait. Tell me how you actually feel about this. Uh, the next stop comment we got Zap. This is from the same. I think Blockchain Boot came in and said, "I agree. Me too." And then uh, from last week's episodes, uh, a blacklist of banks. Uh, Wartime Psycho said, "Yeah, Andreas got the big donations from people in 2018 or so. 
and said he sold all of it to pay his house off or something fairly reasonable. Cool. Thanks for the, um, the, uh, what would you call that? I guess. I don't know. And then blockchain book with zap. Hey, snackers are loving the show, man. We're doing good. Yeah. Cool. We're doing good. We're doing good. Doing good. What are you doing this weekend? What am I doing this weekend? That is the question you just asked me. I, I'm going, I, we're supposed to do a Thanksgiving thing tomorrow, right? Oh yeah. That's going to be fun. A potluck. Yeah. And I'm like supposed to cook potluck. a chili. <gasps> you are. That I have not it. bought any of the ingredients for. So we'll see. Uh, Make it happen. So it fun fact for the snackers at home. Uh, there'll be somebody who brings a Buffalo chicken dip every year. And this person's Buffalo chicken dip goes perfect with your brisket chili. I won't say who it is. But I talked to that person. They are bringing the buffalo chicken dip. So if you could, if you go with, if you do this biscuit chili, we will have the perfect. Don't do the trashy thing and put no uh, buffalo chicken dip side by on. side though. It doesn't matter. It's the it's the the assertion that they are a pair. They are a pair. It's trashy. <laughs> no, they're a pair. <laughs> buffalo chicken dip, brisket chili. They're married, and then you just go like this, and you get half on one spoon, the other half. On the the real, I mean, that's really good, dude. I'm giving you a compliment. It's good there's stuff. any, no, it's not a compliment to say this hamburger tastes great with ketchup. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, just to be completely <laughs> frank, uh, but uh, I think if there's any alpha in the statement, it's that uh, blue cheese might be a good pairing with, uh, God, okay, with a uh, chili. I don't know. Post the chili recipe on the on Saturdays. Maybe the Sackers will want to see it. I mean, it's I just search brisket chili and it's. Like oh, is that how thing. you do it? Oh, I thought you yeah, had the whole thing. No, yeah. why would I do that? I'm not a I'm not an expert on chili. I'm like a dude who doesn't who doesn't know anything. Why would I know? Why would I have like Why would I have like a real recipe from chef? For chili? I used to know a guy that had a recipe of like really good Texas chili, and uh, I'd ask him for the recipe. He said no. So keep it in wow, the family. I that guess. guy sounds serious. That, no, he was serious about his family. It was his family's chili. Don't tell that guy that his chili tastes good with chicken buffalo dip. He will not like. No, it. his chili was just good by itself. For the record, that's yeah. See, that's the real compliment. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, we're doing the Thanksgiving thing, and then on Sunday, what are you, you know, bringing? Uh, I'm gonna make a ham, like uh, I did last year. It's such a. It's just like you unwrap it and put it on a. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a simple man. You know what it tastes, what that tastes good with is a trash bag. That's <laughs> a pro tip for you guys. <laughs> hey man, it, it was, it was eating pretty well last year. It, know, it was like Everyone loves ham. Hey, I'm just hey, messing hey, around. I'm just trying to, trying to turn the table. Cool. Stackers, y'all have a great week. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, I guess we're, I guess we're going to shoot next Friday, probably remotely. I don't know if we'll be here, um, but we'll see you next week after Thanksgiving. And um, Yeah. Have a great Thanksgiving. Have a great holiday. Keon. Zap. Cool.